And welcome to another edition of Nerd Flow Podcast. This is issue 140. And um, if you're new to the show, man, this is a podcast all about nerding out on the latest and greatest in nerd culture from video games to anime to anime. I think I said anime twice, but anyway, TV shows, movies, pro wrestling, you name it. This is what we talk about on Nerd Flow Podcast. What is up? Gentlemen, what's happening? What's going on? What's it? What's it? What's up? Uh, <laughs> um, speaking of men, have y'all seen the new trailer for King's Men that dropped today? No, I didn't. It did. It just I dropped. It just it literally just dropped. I saw it on Twitter. Just dropped. So I'm gonna go check that. And out. Nobody notified me. Oh, I just didn't have time there to you know my usual copy paste in every single location in the world but yeah it's out though <laughs> it's okay <laughs> it's out you know I'm gonna look at it later no, yeah no nah, it's good it looks good I gotta um, I don't watch I still haven't watched um, Golden Circle but I will I have it on my uh, I saw Golden Circle I like the first Kingsman better than Golden Circle yeah well it kind of they kind of gave away you know that so and so comes back and it's like they, they gotta get that away. They gotta get that away in the trailer. Oh. To my Etsy. Yeah. So that was like kinda like a bummer. It's like, really? I don't feel that much in the trailer? Y'all you know, could have kept him. Y'all could have not I gave him credit at all, just so you can think he did already, but anyway. Um but yeah, man, this is Nerdflow Podcast. Um first and foremost, let's do a little bit of housekeeping before we get into the topics for the week. Um, we have, we are on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can search Nerve Flow or Nerve Flow Podcast. Uh, we have Nerve Flow Art where we go out in search of the latest and the greatest, dopest art out there on the internet. And we showcase it through our uh, Nerve Flow community, which is on Facebook, which you can also search uh, Nerve Flow for and join. Uh, please answer the questions appropriately. Because I can tell when you're a bot, especially if you say yes to all three of the questions and none of the three of those questions ask for a yes or no answer. Just saying. I had to decline somebody this week because I think they were. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, uh, we got the YouTube channel sitting at, I think it was the last time I checked, like 48 subscribers. We're almost at 50. Uh, we need 100 subscribers to um, get the official Nerdflow uh youtube url uh, each and every single episode that you hear on sprinkler live at 10 p.m central goes straight to our uh, youtube feed so if you're down with youtube you just like youtube is your main form of media and entertainment then you should subscribe to the channel click the bell and then we can get notified when those new episodes hit live and if you're a baller and you got youtube premium you just listen to the audio version on YouTube and not even had a screen on. Just saying. Um, we got 50% off Nerdflow t-shirts on teespring.com. Um, Nerdflow, uh, you can use the promo code NF2020. Just a small alert. We're testing out some things. We may be going to a new vendor. I won't say who we may be going to, but Young is getting some shirts from this particular vendor next month. And we'll find out the quality of the shirts versus the shirts we got that we've previously had from Teespring. So we may be switching. So we'll, we will notify you guys when the link changes. Um, so Dang, you know, they won't be into next month? Yeah, I think the, what you call it, said July, second week of July. I'll tell you today. I'll tell you. Um, most of them, sure, they always take like two weeks. They both do, though. They, they typically both take like two weeks to, two or three weeks to, Push pump out t shirts, t spring, and uh, the other vendor that I won't say. Um, is it because so, of the uh, because of COVID or it's just their process? It could be, it could be a, a good number of the two because t spring normally when we've ordered shirts for like cons and stuff, they typically take about two weeks to come in a lot of times unless they just got a real good, a real good flow on turnaround rate. I think, I think I maybe ordered like extra shirts that one time. And I think I maybe got them in like a week. But I think that's because I rushed it. But I paid for extra shipping. Um, Superhero Stuff is our affiliate. 
um, you can use our special link in the description of the show. Um, just click on that uh, link, and if you buy anything through superhero stuff, where it be you know premium fitted uh, superhero hats that I need to purchase myself. Um, and when you use our link, we get a cake back and it helps out the show. So, um, yeah, man, it has been not a super duper like busy week, but it's been some stuff going on. But like this weekend has been, whew, um, from a social media standpoint, it's been kind of, boy, what the heck is going on? It's like. I feel like mm. I feel like 2020 just been like, hey, 2019, hold my beer, be right back. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> let me show you, let me show you how it's done. It's like, dang, it's like this year is on a roll, and hopefully some of the stuff that you know, aside from diseases and all these, uh, it's a lot of like. Speaking of that though. There's a lot of like old celebrities dying from what's the, the guy from uh what's his name from Lord of the Rings? The guy uh, became Bilbo. I think that's him. Yeah, just recently, that. like like literally, like maybe like two three days ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he died. Um, I think I posted like the voice actor for. Crash Bandicoot passed away. Oh yeah, guy. it was a black guy. Um, who else? Somebody else from Lord of the Rings passed away earlier this year. That was in Lord of the Rings. That was the character in Lord of the Rings too, as well. Can't think of who it is. Um, but yeah, man, it's like a lot of the, like a lot of the older actors are. I don't know if it's like COVID related or anything like that, or. Cause I don't think I even even after they pass, I don't think we hear anything else about like how you know to what you know terms that they pass away or anything like that. But I was like, I just been noticing that a lot. Like, like every other week or every month, it's just been like, dang, this person, this person, this person. So, um, I have noticed though, um, a lot of uh, you can kind of tell the movies about the movies about to open and ramp back up, cause like a lot of I'm starting to see when I do kind of like catch TV here and there, I'm starting to notice that they are like running movie trailers on TV now, which they haven't been. Or they don't, or they'll throw, or when it was during the pandemic, they would throw a trailer on and then it would be like, they wouldn't even say like, where can you watch this at? So. Yeah. Uh, like the, uh, what I've been seeing is, uh, if I see anything with um like for a movie, it'll say coming to theaters and streaming on such and such. Yeah. They wouldn't even for a while they wouldn't even say they wouldn't even say theaters. They would just be like I think I think what they were using was like on demand or something like that, or you could buy on demand or something like that. Something like that. So But yeah, we're gonna see how this is gonna work out with the with the movie theater. I know AMC Boy, they they consistently be putting their foot in their mouth. I think they just like sucking on their own toes, cause they just be. They was talking about like, oh, people not gonna wear masks and all this other stuff and blah blah blah. blah. Like, and then they backtrack like, yes, people gotta wear masks. I'm like, and like, you should have known. Come on, come on, man, come on. I mean, they been consistently just foot in the mouth. Some tell me AMC Trump supporters. <laughs> 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 Yeah, they just got this very, very dumb leadership. Could be, yeah, from the universal. Uh, thing. I mean, with dumb leadership, you no know, more than likely they are Trump supporter. <laughs> the dumb followed the dumb. <laughs> lack of common sense, but you know. Um, so Hold on, home. I just gotta get this out there in my chest. Yeah, I know this fool had the audacity to say nobody knew about Juneteenth until I said something about it. Uh, I know, I know. Somebody asked me, like, you heard what he said? I'm like, yes, I heard he said. This is, this yeah, is I this really is wanted this. to just... Ignorance this one, a show where you can comes in handy. Ignorance is bliss. So, yeah. Um, no, it's not. 
<laughs> ignorance is ignorance. Um, Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed once again. Um, it is. Oh my god! It was supposed to drop in September. Um, CD Projekt Red put out a press mm-hmm. release about, uh, you know, just perfecting the game and all of that stuff. Which I mean, I get how people have been, you know, it was April, September, now it's November. I think at this point it's really just trying to buy extra time for the next gen consoles on top of that, but also perfecting the game also as well. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, when you know in the in the gaming industry, when you ship a broke game, they don't let that shit go. Y'all know y'all gamers out there don't let that go. Y'all hold on to that too. That's Anthem. 2K20. 2K20. NBA 20 NBA NBA 2K and WWE 2K20 <laughs> Anthem yeah. so like so you know when you man play, Anthem has so much damn potential man I mean they still they still uh speaking of that too I mean they still they're still working on it they, they did give an update this is like by maybe doing the COVID and all that stuff because I follow them on Twitter and so they put out like a long um like a, a anthem blog because they haven't posted one in like such a long time and they had to have like a new director and all that stuff that's working um to rework the game and all that stuff so um i think like i said the last thing either they're going to take the same license and read kind of like in a sense from a destiny perspective for those who know like taking King, like taking like a super large expansion and is redoing the, is literally an expansion is redoing the entire, uh, flipping the game on his head pretty much and making it all different because a lot of the stuff, what they were saying is that, um, you know, I think you was on here when we was talking about uh, with Anthem, how, um, they made like EA made them use the, uh, what's the engine for battlefield? Um, uh, what's the damn engine call? Uh, I think it's Frostbite. Frostbite engine. So they use Frostbite on Anthem, but the thing with Frostbite is it looks beautiful, but from when everybody uses like Unreal, for example, in Frostbite, it takes you two weeks to do something where in Unreal, it only would take you two hours. So that's like the type of limitation they were working with with Anthem, but it was like... Big boss is like, you're going to use this because this shit look pretty, and I'm your boss, so yeah, do it or get fired. Um, but yeah, so that's what they was kind of dealing with. So like with stuff with the environments in the world being one continuous, like large world, um, what they were talking about in the blog is like with this Anthem 2.0, they want to, they're going to more likely segment it. To make it where it's on like loading zones to go to where it's not so taxing on the game itself because i mean that's kind of i mean that was i even said myself like man that's a big undertaking to have one big giant world and you that's why you have so many freaking load screens or like textures would load in like hella late when you land god no you i know i've seen that several times in that game um yeah, so, but uh, but yeah. Speaking of uh, EA though, so EA play was Thursday. Um, they could have kept that. They really could have kept that. Cause <laughs> they they could man, <laughs> Just, they could have kept that. This is like, how you said it, man. You show me, you show me Madden. You show me a new thing that's coming to Apex Legends. Which y'all cubs gonna do it in a little trailer anyway? You show me the new Star Wars game, which I had already talked about like a week ago, or maybe like early in the week, so everybody kind of knew about it. So it kind of like stole his thunder, just talking about it super early before y'all show it again in the, in the EA play. So it kind of like it stole his own thunder, so it wasn't even really as impactful because we kind of knew about it. Um, they show skate which was already pretty much been freaking rumored in the past couple months. Y'all just said, yeah, we doing it. I mean, so it was like, they, they could have kept that. Wait, 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 wait. Skate? 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 Yeah. Oh, 
I don't know who won't. I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm like this when it comes to. I'm more or less looking forward to the uh, the remaster Tony Hawk more than anything in the world. Um, I haven't played. I've never played Skate before. I always wanted to, but it's just you know I'm kind of with you with the whole. Honestly, I don't even think EA should have done something right now. If you ask me, because everybody was still riding the hype train for the PS5 as it is. Yeah, it was still. It's still. It's something that everybody is still talking about. It's still a buzz. So I really don't think EA should have done something right now. They would have been better off just releasing the trailers individually without having an event, you know? Yeah, they really like they really could have. Like it was so short. It was not like you show me some stuff about Sims, which I always do any freaking way. And you say you show a trailer for Man, which we already know that's coming anyway, because it's June. It comes out in July now, so we kinda know that's on the way. Um I mean, and they show like some stuff, like some development stuff, like with the future of, um, like the future of VA and all this stuff. So it's like, but you didn't show me no games or anything. You just showed me people working in development. That's cool and stuff, but that's kind of stuff. Like, you put that stuff on your YouTube channel or something. Nobody, like, nobody cares. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing to just do a, a, a live stream for basically yeah, yeah that's it, basically it, it, it was it was not and it's like it almost makes you wonder like what the hell was y'all gonna show if that was e3 bro y'all was gonna cook up some y'all was gonna cook yeah. up some stuff and start slapping this titles and start, start slapping titles across this, the screen it was like the nintendo version of e3 with what e3 uh what ea just did it, it was like the nintendo part of e3 bro, nintendo i'm just like uh more, nintendo treehouse has more going <laughs> more, more going for itself than ea played it <laughs> At least I, if I didn't know what the Dang. game was, at least they showed me some game or a game, gameplay. So it's like, it's like now back to the whole Anthem thing. It's like if they would have like show like a preview of what Anthem 2.0 or Anthem Next, whatever they're gonna call it, what that's gonna look like. If they would have get like a like a little preview, that would have been worth it. Mm-hmm. That would have been worth it. But you showing me like you know Star Wars called Squadron, which is I'm like again, it's cool. They're, they're still trying to you know. Squeeze every drop they can get out of that Star Wars license that they have uh, every year. So I mean, I, I understand mm-hmm. that. I, I understand that. I get that, but it's like y'all could have kept that. Y'all could have again, like you said, y'all could have thrown a bunch of trailers out on the internet on YouTube. If they follow EA, would have gave something to GameSpot, IGN. Yeah. They would have showed it. Woop de woop. Yeah, I was woop just about to say, you had all them outlets right there. You just know here, so you know they're gonna show it anyway. Yeah. So. It was yeah, that last stream was uh was pointless. Doo doo. <laughs> it was. It so was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about uh, how about this Undertaker though, man? When you, when you say Undertaker, yeah, Undertaker. Dude. Apparently has a. Uh, it's. He's he's retired, I guess. Um, but some people ain't reading. To I ain't get a chance to watch it. Some people ain't reading to the reading to the article that it said. He said he literally said until Vince McMahon calls me and asks me for another match. We thought Shawn yeah, Michaels. We thought Shawn Michaels would retire until they wave Saudi money in his face. I don't know. Here's, here's my thing. Here's my thing. If we're being realistic here, if we're being realistic here, let's be honest. Son. Even if it's just a part of me, because especially after that match in Saudi with the uh, Brothers of Destruction, I still haven't watched like you can literally match. just see, you, you like in the match at the end of the match after, especially after Triple H uh, messed up, I think what his uh, uh pec he uh, tore his pec muscle. Yeah, uh, Sean and him in the corner, you can like see Sean said, "We're we're we're too old for this." Like, yeah, Sean, you are too old for this. Like, if you would have came back, if you would have came back, you'd have been better off just doing it against AJ. More than yeah. anybody in the world. That's literally the match everybody wants to see. But still, yeah. it's just you know I, I get in in you know even in the little uh, in the last ride documentary, Taker said you know I don't see too much of a future in the ring, especially like right now. But he said he'll see himself more as a uh, that that emergency glass case you got to break if something happens. Yeah. You know, that's pretty much where everything but comes bro, from. No the whole retirement. Glass. There is no emergency glass case for the Undertaker. To be to, to be completely honest, there's no point in wrestling where lately where he it just felt like oh Taker needs to come out. The only match that would have ever made sense, and they're both too old to even do it now, is Sting. 
That's it. Yeah, Sting. Yeah, literally and, it. And Sting ain't with the company anymore. Yeah, so it's like he's not with the company anymore. So yeah, so it's like that would that would be the only time. The only thing he needs to really do at this point is really if he's if he's trying to put or give something back, make sure that they don't screw up Bray Wyatt. Make sure they don't screw up a character like the Fiend. That's what he needs to do. Because that is the closest it's, thing yeah. to a a type of mythical character in wrestling that they have. And mm-hmm. you don't want to let Vince McMahon's senile old age mess that up. Or his wishy washiness of changing his decision on, you know, keeping the character yeah, because... being pushed strong or not being pushed. I, I literally, I remember saying this when I first saw uh, the scene at SummerSlam. I remember seeing this image. I was like, I actually, and this is how you know this is real. When you don't have control over what you say, it literally comes out. It came out when I was looking at this man's interest. I'm like, I literally said, Vince, don't you mess this up. I ain't never thought I'd say some stuff like that, but I like, Vince, don't, don't mess this up. Look how, look at how this man came out with his former head. He turned his former self into a lantern. And how the fiend is, but unfortunately, the fiend has hit bump uh, road bumps recently, especially with uh, Hell in the Cell last year with Seth Rollins. But we ain't gonna jump on that. But still, yeah, Bray is like the current face of fear because I've, I've said this plenty of times. If Bray didn't even do pro wrestling, he'll be great when it comes to the horror movie genre because mm-hmm. of how the fiend is actually somebody that you could actually put in a horror movie and make a whole movie about it. So. Yeah. But while we're on the subject of wrestling, how about these allegations, man? Uh, bro, um, so let so the the speak out hashtag has been running rampant. Okay, so so here's here's the first thing. Can anybody does anybody know? Because I haven't looked into it to see where, but I kind of feeling that it probably came from this. I don't know. I'm not 100 percent sure. So don't y'all don't nobody take me to task on this uh, in the comments or anything like that. But the speak out did that have anything to do with the last of us is there some stuff in the last of us that has to do with like you know sexual harassment anything like that or any because bro that crap just like the day last of us 2 came out it lit a fire like dude people, um, i don't know man at first i, I thought I it was just, at first, at first i thought it was just british wrestling because i was all i started hearing was like British wrestlers' names, NXT UK names, Progress wrestlers' uh, names is what I started hearing at first, and then I started hearing um, names from AEW, some names from the Independent. Then I heard uh, what's the boy name? So y'all um, wrestlers, y'all favorite wrestler, favorite wrestler raping people. Uh, it's a, it's a mix. Basically, of it's 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 a mix. It's, so it's it's so amongst it's, it. It's it's a mix. It's a mix of things. So it's a it's a mixer of some people doing some stuff with some underage, whether it be male or female, and then there's some just some sexual harassment type stuff. It's like so, man. It's just like so. David Starr, which is an indie wrestler, that's where it first jumped off at. And I heard somebody post a tweet saying, "Oh, you know, we're blah blah blah. We're done with David." So I'm like, "What the heck did he do?" Uh, and then I started seeing more and more stuff. More stuff started to happen, started to happen. And then the whole thing with Matt Riddle came out and happened right before he's about to debut on SmackDown that Friday. And I'm uh-huh. like, oh, snap. See, here's the thing about that. Here's the thing about that. So apparently, Matt had a stalker already, and he actually notified WB about it. Yeah, um, his lawyer. And that's what I think release. many people was. Mm-hmm. So. I ain't gonna sit here and say something when it comes to Matt because he he already had this problem that one and they know what the problem is. He actually already notified a company for it. But many people were worried that because of this whole thing he wasn't gonna get pushed. But you know, many people have uh, said that he's still gonna get the push that he's uh he's intended to get since he's on SmackDown now. So with Matt, I wouldn't exactly put him in this whole little thing right now because in a sense his is is being taken care of and he's actually been public about it all that. But as far as uh, people like Jack Gallagher, who got released, he got released. Um, um, who else? Um, bro, it was, it was a it, bunch it's, of an, it's, it's a bunch of them, bro. Lingero, uh, Wolfgang. Um, 
it's like so many freaking names, bro. Uh, AEW names. They Bobby mentioned. Pearl. They they mentioned Darby Allen. They mentioned Jake uh, Jake Hager, uh, formerly known Jack Swagger from WWE. Oh, um, oh my god, hey, gotta, come on, uh, man. It's, who else? Man, it's a bunch of names, bro. And it's like a bunch of like female wrestlers. Like either they got trained by them coming out talking about speaking out against stuff. Then let's shift over to Twitch streamers and Destiny community. There's a streamer called Say No to Rage that's a really popular streamer in a Destiny community. He's been so evidently female star coming out saying that doing some events because they have an event called a Guardian Con that goes down that happens in full. This it's probably like third or fourth year and actually it's going on right now, but it's in a digital format right now what they're doing for it currently at the moment. Um Mm-hmm. But he's been females been coming out out the woodwork because he came out sexually harassing them and this boy is like that Friday night I was streaming that crap like just the internet blew up and he was trending like big time and I was like bro oh, this dude this, and this dude is married got kids and I'm like all these females coming out with these stories these long drawn out stories about how he's just like oh and then today. There's this yeah his life over with. There's this clan in Destiny called BSK. These are they're real good PVP players, and so same thing with them. But they were doing certain stuff like um, making girls send them news to join their clan and trade news back and forth through Discord. All this other crap. Bungie got involved. Right. Like, Bungie got involved. Like BSK is no longer like Bungie's been laying down the freaking band hammer when it comes to these these situations. Like these persons. No longer all that. Even with the dude say no to rage, he had sponsorships from um, Advanced.gg, which is a gaming supplement company, and like a coffee company. They both in the same time. Like I'm reading all this crap. They all of a sudden they all put out statements like he is. We have already sent our emails. He is no longer with us. I was like, bro, damn man. I can just tell you this right here. If they did it, they deserve everything they do. That happened, but just getting rid of people just because of accusations with no proof, bro. All these are like, bro. These are not just like a short little paragraph of what happened, bro. These are like super long, like that long... don't mean nothing. Like you could be elaborate with a lie. Like I'm, I'm, I'm putting it like this: if it's if it's true, he deserved to lose everything he got. Well, and then... but. But then on if top it's of that, not too, true, he, he dropped it come a, out. Um, he dropped a video like during all uh-huh. this, all of this going on that night, and he was like, "I, you know, because he's he's married, and then so he's like, I've been going through." He put out a little, little uh, like maybe like two, two to three minute video, whatever that you can put on like tw- Twitter or whatever, and he was talking about like you know he's getting help for his. He's been getting help for his problem or whatever, blah, 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 or anything. Oh, he like deserved that. to lose everything he got. Yeah, so it's like it, it, his apology to a lot of people didn't seem sincere at all. Like, people Gen- were just genuine. Genuine at all. Like, yeah, was, see, that's what I'd be like. Like, you know, during the Me Hold Me Too movement, like, a lot of people were just coming out with stories. And, like, the women were just like, they'll come out later saying they lied, and they were just. They either just wanted some money or they was wanting to get back because they didn't get hired for a job. And they was proving that some of these women had lied. And like a lot of people had lost their careers or lost sponsorships and stuff based just solely off of accusation with no proof. So, you know, that's what made me start like, let me show me receipts. And then, you know, I just I, I, I'm just not going to go off the word of somebody. Yeah. So going forward more with that so so friday it was it was that earlier today um it was the whole thing with in destiny with the with the bsk clan and stuff like that now i think a snowball is about to start again because there's another guy that came out and said he used to work for mixer which is microsoft's uh rival uh-huh. to twitch and he's the only black he was the only black person working on the staff and the lady that was like the head or whatever in charge and whatever he was doing. She made the analogy of partners, which are 
the people who make partner and make money off Mixer, she made the analogy that they're my slaves. And she, he said that freaking enraged him about that. And he tried to take it to court and everything and all that stuff. And they said, and then their def- her defense was she can't be racist because she hired black people. So if y'all see Mixer... Hey, if y'all see Mixer t- trending at any time in some point for anything, or Mark, uh, either Microsoft's finna, finna quit, either Microsoft is finna to clean house on Mixer. Yeah, they finna clean house. Or you finna see a mass exit as a black streamer from Mixer going to Twitch. That's all I'm saying. Because it's like, it's just, dude, it's like one thing after another. It's been. Microsoft crazy. more like finna clean house. They don't want to lose. Like all oh, their streamers, yeah, yeah, and they got a, they have a, they have a good amount of like black streamers I know over there, for sure. Um, especially on something they just they're trying to really put effort and time into to build up to compete with uh, with Twitch and all that stuff. So um, I have a feeling they're gonna somebody from a higher level gonna find out and it's gonna trickle down. And they ain't, it ain't gonna be no yeah. it, ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be no trial that need to be. It's gonna be just be like get your stuff and get out. Cause, yeah, down, down, down with them. Best problems. thing about the ass whooping, the ass whooping trying to tend to travel through the family. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But man, <laughs> it's been for yeah. The, the, the speak out thing. I'm just trying. I gotta look a little bit. More. I'm trying. I'm just trying to wonder like where did this come? Like it just out of nowhere, and it was just like a fire, man. It was, That's dude, it, it was. And my wife even asked me, she, I was sitting on the couch after I got done streaming Friday night, and she was like, what are you doing? I'm like, um, I explained to her what was going on with the Say No to Rage thing. I'm like, it's just, it was just getting out of control, bro. It was like, I was in there reading tweets for probably, I got done streaming at like 11.30. Dude, I was sitting on the couch reading tweets for like about two hours. That's just how, how much stuff was going on. It's freaking nuts. And Bungie's already put in a new code of like they've they've just kind of really put the code of conduct like in place. Like if anybody does anything racist or anything, oh, that's the other thing that happened. Also, um, Call was, of Duty. No, um, I think it was they they dropped that. They talked about the emblem. I think it was Friday. I think it was Friday. So Friday, Destiny uh, Bungie. Uh, is going to release an emblem on Tuesday for Black Lives Matter. It's going to be a it's going to be a pin and an in-game emblem you can get just by because they always anytime you buy anything from the Bungie store, it doesn't go to Bungie at all. It goes to it gets donated to charity for children. And so, but the pin is going to an organization for equal rights. Um, so they dropped. Oh, this, I bet they lost a lot of streamers. I mean, a lot of players behind it. Bro, it was like the like the top streamers was like they were like fine, don't let the door hit you. They was like, and and, and we had it was like people like myself and some other some other uh, another guy I know um, that's a streamer for a streamer for Destiny. We were like, I ain't taking this off because I'm not I'm putting it, I'm I'm getting that emblem. I'm not taking it off. It's gonna be some boys. It's gonna be, and it, it's even like I might need to buy it and jump in the crucible. Yes, bro. I think I think some, I think some of us are doing that like just intentionally because some of them are like they are like legit like just upset. Just, just just jump in a whole Black Lives Matter clan and just see. <laughs> 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 just go through, like get it get it all get a Black Lives oh, Matter. Oh, on, bro! Uh, somebody clan. like um, what was that? Somebody I, mean, I don't know. If it, I don't know if it was like a, a well known like player or anything like that. But I know doing the George Floyd thing, somebody got reported big time because some clan decided to call themselves George Floyd's Big Lip. And boy, the community managers went out today. <laughs> I'm like, like, dude, like, dude, like, really? And then Bungie's like, we just like, it's like, look, we don't want these type of people. We don't want when they put out the code kind of that they're like, we don't want any, we don't want these type of people. In our community, they said you are. She said if you have ever in recently said anything, uh, said anything racist, anything like sexist with all that stuff that just went down and everything, they were like you because they do worlds first for like raids and stuff like that and dungeons. They say if you are associated with any of that, you are automatically disqualified. So they said you better 
think about it before you do it. And I was like, Oh, well, you're infringing upon my free speech. It's like, it's like, yeah. They like bungees like riding hard for like, like rights of like everybody, man. Like they they riding like hard. They don't care. Like their CEO. I don't know if y'all know this, but like their CEO did like the Black Lives Matter, um, um, like the protests and all that stuff in Seattle. He like he got on. He mm-hmm. like he said he, he, it was actually right before that uh, stream that they did for the new content. He was like he was like I got pepper sprayed and and, and gas like the night before at a at a, at a protest. So it's like, and they keep going. He's like, they've been going out like every, like, you know, putting groups together, members of the studio. Hey, them folks in Seattle down, bro. Yes. Yeah, cause- like, them folks took over a whole police station and a whole block. Yep. Like, Seattle. Like, like Seattle. Like, they took Seattle over like seven playing. blocks. Yeah, man. They, they, uh, they are, they are riding. I'm like, see, it's like, like Seattle, like man, why can't you know other places? Why can't y'all be like that? Um, uh, Seattle is a very liberal place. Yeah, that nah. should have never fly down south. They've been, they've been, man. Yeah, I think the white folks would have let that ride down south. <laughs> yeah, not um, a nuka. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, the Snyder Cut. So Snyder Cut, we got a teaser. Was that Friday? I think it was Friday, Friday or Thursday. Um, so yeah, we got a teaser. Um, in the teaser, if you haven't seen it, um, it's Wonder Woman. She's in some type of like looks like a cave or some type of structure or whatever. Um, and she has a torch, and so she's walking around, and you hear uh, what you call it, that plays Lex Luthor, um, kind of just talk about and describe the 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 threat. Uh, that's coming um and when she puts the the torch to there's a like a, a drawing of dark side and then it cuts um this is what i gotta say is there has everybody seen that seen the um the teaser no nah, i had you need to watch it bro i have another yeah i should watch it um the tone of that couple seconds it's way different then it is crazy how how much different that that this Justice League from Zack Snyder is going to be different from what came out in the movie theaters. Oh, and then at the end of that trailer, it, it clips to you know that same similar scene where all the troops are coming in. We you know that little cut scene in Justice League where there were all the different like the um, the Amazonians and they're fighting against the like the Parademons and all that stuff. Oh yeah, when they showed the first war, when they first yeah, tried to so they, so they cut, so they cut to the one that Snyder did, which is Darkseid standing in the middle of all the troops that's coming in. So it's way so, and it, it ain't just Parademons that he's bringing with him. So it's like crazy how much different the vision was. Just saw it. Just saw it. Thank you. Did you see just what I'm talking it. about? Let me go to yeah. YouTube right quick. It's so <laughs> it's so different. Oh, I'm so ready to see this. Yes. I'm actually excited to see this. Now. It's so freaking different, bro. It's like it's it's it was when I saw that, part, it was like it's mind boggling. Just the tone, I, like I was legit like, oh man, this is about to go down, like for real. <laughs> it's, it's literally like what two minutes. Bro. Oh, okay. I, I thought they was. I thought they was, like the preview I saw. I thought they were showing on oh, when season two of uh, Mandalorian coming out. I'm gonna say why they would show that on uh, HBO. What's going <laughs> No, I'm on um, YouTube. Oh, oh yeah, YouTube. Oh, okay. Absolutely, you could have just went to the community, bro, and looked that up. Uh, it was faster to go to YouTube. I typed in "It's in" and Snyder Cup. Could pop straight up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, it's it's freaking. That's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna go down for that. It's gonna be real good, real real good. 
I just have a feeling. I feel like they actually might get a just a lead too off of this. Mm. Okay, yeah, I can continue. Yeah, so um, let's see. Last thing of the night. Um, I don't Hold know, on, I got some anime news to get to. Okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Before I do last, talk about some Last of Us stuff. Oh, okay. So, anybody that reads manga, you probably already know this, but spoiler alert for Naruto and Baruto fans. Jiraiya is not dead. Well, Jiraiya technically is not dead, but like his clone is like fighting right now. So, like, uh, like, if you've been watching uh, Baruto, you you notice uh that. They went back in time for, you know, fighting one of the, uh, I forgot what they called. Anyway, fighting one of the original, the people, one of the aliens that came to Earth that brought the juice, the juice to the Earth. And, um, he, you know, so they went back in time because he actually went back in time to try to kill Naruto when he was a kid and take the nine tail fox out of him. And um, so Kasen Kijin, I think I'm trying to get the right name, trying to say his name right. But uh, they uh, so you know they they put a lot of emphasis on Jiraiya. So I was just like, hmm, maybe Jiraiya is gonna make another appearance after I saw those uh, episodes. Then we uh. We saw, you know what I'm saying, they, in the, you know, because the manga is way ahead of the anime. So, you know, we saw this new character pop up with white hair with the same build as Jiraiya. Like, facial structure, everything, except he got a beard and his hair not wild. It's like straight or whatnot. You know, it, but he... he Pretty much, you know, just looking at the face, you can look and see uh, that is Jiraiya. Asuki, as Asutsuki. I think that's what their name is. All right, so, like, the, the, the character's name is Kashin Kojin. And Kashin Kojin is Jiraiya's clone. And they revealed that at the end of the manga. Because Naruto was just like... I got some like I don't know why I'm rooting for this guy, but I just got a feeling about him. And Baruto, you know, he was just like he looks familiar. So you know, like Naruto had a feeling like, yo, this is Jiraiya, but like, dude finna die. So well, they, they making it look like he finna die. We all know what anime and manga can do. That can go either way. So. uh like it's getting real interesting. I hate that manga drops like once a month, so I gotta wait for uh, next month episode on July. Well, next month's e- a issue to drop on uh, July twentieth because it drops on the twentieth of every month. So you know what I'm saying? Like I was super excited. I I've been reading the manga every month on this anime app, like on the Shonen Jump anime app. I mean manga app. So you know I've been reading. It. So, speaking of that, something else that happened this week. For all the Vegeta fans out there, I gift this to you. Akira Toriyama gave you a gift. Vegeta surpassed Goku and defeated Moro for like 15.3 seconds. Oh, damn. But oh, damn. Goku said that Vegeta had surpassed him because Vegeta learned a technique on Yardrad that in a short amount of time that Goku couldn't learn. Goku learned instant transmission. Vegeta never did. Like Vegeta did instant transmission just to get to what Goku then was. But like Vegeta was just like it's you know 
he'll never do it again because it. He said he he don't have the time and patience for it. But uh, Vegeta learned the technique like in a short amount of time that Goku could learn, and he was able to defeat Moro in the form he was in. But what Moro had did was he had it, he had this subordinate that he had backed up all his data into. So like all his uh, I guess his whole build. So what he did was he ate because Moro steals the, the energy from people. That's how he gets his strength and becomes younger. So Moro ate this this guy and he got all the strength that he had lost that Vegeta had whooped out of him and released all the spirits from all the spirit and all the energy that Moro had took from everybody in the universe. But Moro had that energy backed up in this guy, like a copy of that energy. Like how you can copy the energy, I really just don't know. But I guess they said, because what it's leading to, it's going to be a fusion. Like we either going to see Vegito or Gogeta, one of the two. And I'm just going to put it like this. And I know everybody's going to say, oh, man, they couldn't let Vegeta have that win by himself. They had to bring Goku in the fold somehow, some way. I already see that coming. And I'm just going to go ahead and solve that problem for y'all. If you hadn't just started watching Dragon Ball, like if you've been watching Dragon Ball since the 80s, like I have, it's about Goku. So when it comes to defeating a major villain, other than Gohan, which is Goku's son, Pretty much, it's going to be Goku involved in defeating the villain somehow, some way, because it's his show. Everybody else is just fodder for the fight. True. Just like Baruto. Like, Baruto, Baruto pretty much is going to be the main catalyst. But, like, let's just be honest. Naruto and Sasuke have made some major appearances in the Baruto series and it's pretty much still they show for right now. Mm-hmm. Like, like, come on. Like, I mean, basically not Baruto and Sakura are Naruto and Sasuke itself. They just say button heads like Naruto and Sasuke. Sakura got the Sharing Gun. Like, damn, that's a bad combination. Sakura got the Sharing Gun and she got, uh, I mean, uh, Sarada. Sarada got, I've been saying Sakura. She got the Sharon Gun and Sakura's strength. That's deadly. Like, and then Baruto, he got a special eye. He don't have the Byaku Gun, but he got a, a, a special eye, like a curse mark in his hand. And he got a, a, a different eye. Like, that's not the. Biaka gun, the Renegon, or the um the uh damn I just said the name of the eye. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah, I know what I mean. You know what I'm saying? Or the showering gun. Like, but his eye different. So it's basically like he got almost like Naruto's powers plus a special eye. So like that's cold and basically Basically, Mishiki is like Orochimaru, a, a good version of Orochimaru. So, like, with these pretty much classic animes, they starting to get, like, pretty good, in my opinion. Well, I'm going to just say in the mangas, they starting to get pretty good. I can't wait to see these yeah, actually right. put on film. Yeah, yeah, I can't man. wait to see these put on film. Yeah, man, I can't wait to that to that new uh, <coughs> that new um, what you call it, whatever they're gonna call the uh, the newest saga for, for Dragon Ball. With, what you call it, Maru? Oh yeah, uh, it's the Maru saga. Yeah, I think that's what I've been hearing. It's the Maru saga. It's actually called the Galactic Patrol saga because like everybody joins the Galactic, Galactic Patrol, Patrol to. Yeah. To, to defeat Morrow. And then, you know, we still got the new season of Bleach coming out. We still got season two of uh, Demon Slayer coming out. You know what I'm saying? They, 
it's just COVID nineteen pushed everything back. Back, yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. so you know what I'm saying? We got a lot of stuff coming. Anime wise. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, for anybody, I don't know if it's still a valid thing for everybody because I know I got it like last month. Y'all may want to check whatever email y'all have associated for those who have Pooh Paper PlayStation Plus and see if y'all got a free two months of Funimation uh, from May. Just double check. Y'all might have got a code. I get that. Okay. I just, you know. I don't need animation. I don't need it. I know you of all people, though. But I'm just saying, if you want to just you know, take advantage of it, just because they did, they did it pretty much due to that hiccup with PlayStation Plus, where people thought they were gonna get Dark Souls or some other game uh, for the month of May. So they did it as a kind of because because May is anime month, so they just did it as a thing to. So they could have gave Kakarot away for free on PlayStation Plus. Yeah, they can't do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the last uh, I mean, uh, I mean, Xenoverse Two old enough to be gave away yeah, for free on PlayStation Plus. Plus. They could, that, that needs to be PlayStation Plus anyway, but that's besides the point. They milk in the crap. Man, Xenoverse Two, Xenoverse Two is still like. Well, I got it on Nintendo oh, Switch for like twenty. Like I got it on Nintendo Switch for like twenty bucks. Like the Xenoverse and the whole, the whole package, like all the DLCs for like twenty plus twenty bucks on PlayStation Plus. I mean, on Nintendo Switch. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, so, Last of Us Two. None of us have like like played it. Like played it. Played it. Um, I actually but... have it in my hands right now. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Uh, you I gonna... just ain't played it. You ain't played it. <laughs> yeah, you gotta let me know if that whole speak out thing has anything to do with it when you play through. I just wanna. I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm gonna play it eventually too. Um, but um, the story that I'm talking about right now is gonna be. So they've been getting a lot of mixed reviews. Some people saying it's re- it's really good. Um, some people are saying that all oh, the story continuity and um, the play mechanics are the same as the previous one. Like that particular statement there is like the play mechanics were good in the first one. So why the hell am I going to change it for the second one? I'm just saying. I I really don't want to play two right now because I never did play one. Oh. So. I wonder, did, I you ever, did you ever to, pick it up on? Did you ever pick it up on Plus? No. I don't know. I might need to turn my game on. Like go I do it morning. Yeah, go to your library and see if you ever did. You ever pick it up by by chance? I know they gave it away for free. The remaster for, PS, for PS4. I, was a, uh, I got one. I got one. Uh, they came on my first PlayStation. It still uh, was in my PlayStation library. I thought I got a brand new one, but. The biggest hype that I this is the only, like I can't now this is the only thing I've been hearing about the Last of Us Two a sex scene in it that, that's about it that's the only thing I've been hearing about the Last of Us Two so far from most people that I know that play the game like oh the sex scene in it I'm like oh okay, yeah, so, well. is, so is the Witcher in God of War <laughs> but yeah hey yeah I know what you know that just reminded me of like Calvin and uh, Briario might be too young but royalty you remember when Tomb Raider first dropped. How they were saying, Lord, there was a new code for the see play with Lord Craft New. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I remember that one. Look at the it <laughs> And then when I it's, it's just triangles all over the place. Right, right. <laughs> like when you go back and look at the graphics of what Tomb Raider One looked like, yes. you're like, why would I want a new code for this? Exactly. You look at a bunch, <laughs> a, bunch of, a bunch of triangles colored like brown. That's literally his brown. <laughs> <laughs> like why would I want like Crash Bandicoot was so much more developed than Tomb Raider Ooh, yeah yeah. If you, think, if you think about it yeah it's very true it's very true um, but last of us but that was like one of the first ones of realism in a gaming character though yeah yeah um, so last of us 2 has been getting review bombed like really hard for some apparent reason I don't know because people have just been. I don't know if people like backlashing against you know uh, the game. I mean, itself. isn't the protagonist a woman? Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah she is. But I mean, you kind of knew that before the game even dropped. I mean, you could just not buy the game and be done. Yes, for protest, done. You won. Um, but that's I really be... don't get America right now. <laughs> 
It's like the way the way a lot of this stuff going, we it's getting reshaped <laughs> drastically. Um but yeah, uh but yeah. I like, believe like like seriously, y'all. I believe it will start seeing mass suicides if a woman was ever elected president. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like the just the stuff folks lose their shit over. Like, please don't let a Mexican ever be elected president. Lord Jesus. It's like, well, I mean, I want I I, I want it to happen because I just want to see what's gonna happen behind it. Yeah. Um, what can I say? Um, but yeah. So, Last of Us again. Big, big review bombed. Um, I gotta look into more some more detail to see. You know, I, but I, I kind of think it's kind of like due to just people just they feel like the people just like yeah, some people just been on their high horse about a lot of stuff, especially um, in some aspects in video games. Man, it's like, oh, y'all just you know you're being paid because of you know Sony's paying y'all to give it a good review. It's like. You, you you do know that like a review from a, a a publication is like the opinion of one person. It is not a collective. It is not a collective of the group of people who all played it. that work at the office and they just round a number and get an average to give you a number. It is literally one person. One. And the best thing you can do is go to Metacritic and take all of those collected opinions from all different publications and get a number. And if that number Pretty much. doesn't, I'm gonna tell y'all how to do it because evidently a lot of y'all don't know how to come, how <laughs> to mean, do averages. Him has everything. You so know the law of averages. <laughs> this is what y'all do. So you take the rating, which should probably be one through ten, and you count how many people rated it. Then you add up all the ratings. So you say, say it's twenty. You'll add up all all twenty of the numbers. Then when you get that total, you divide it by ten. So say you get a rating of all tens out of ten people that rated it. That'll be a hundred. Guess what? When you divide a hundred by ten, you're gonna get a rating of ten. Exactly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, simple math. Is- you Same. learned that in the first grade. Well, you know, some, you know, this generation, they do simple math and some whatever the other type of math is, but they probably... Anyway... We, we and then, anyway. I can give you the law of percentages. <laughs> oh, what you about oh, to say? Oh, this nerve flow. I can drop some nerve... I can drop some theorems and things, you know. I can, I can teach a math class <laughs> that, on that boy, said, I can, that boy said, I can pack up some theorems, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, S squared plus B squared equals C squared. The hell out you on here. <laughs> that's the first thing that came to my mind, bro. Um, but what the hell I want to say? I think that's it, though, man. I think that's going to be it for uh, this edition of Nerf for Podcast. Uh, everybody out there, please stay safe, man. Um, you know, Yo, like, y'all in Texas, please stay safe because yeah. y'all COVID numbers are like ridiculous. Yes, it is, bro. I be masked up in this mug with gloves too when I go out. Um, yeah, I got gloves and I just ordered me a nice little Sub Zero mask. Yeah. Um, like, but yeah, everybody, everybody stay safe. Um, you know, support black content creators, man. That's been like, a, I've been really been. Uh, networking with some black content creators to cook out. Uh, there's another uh, set of the cookout is actually a a collective of like black content creators, black um, like streamers and all that stuff, man. Uh, and they're actually not out of the U.S. They're out of the U.K. of all places, but I like U.K. people. But it was just surprising to see that they're from U.K. But um, hello, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, man. So that's Australian, man. I think, uh, I think same different. difference. Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> oh god. Hey, Australians were originally British. Um, what else I gonna say? Oh man! And then like with the whole speak out thing, like man, like if well, let me like, fix that. Cheerio, old chap. Just don't like what, what's what I got? What's the best I can say? The young is really throwing me out right now. Um, <laughs> Like man, with the whole speak out thing, like man, just just like respect res- respects people's space, man. That's that's like probably the best way I can say it. respects people's space. No means no, and just 
just like move on because it's coming back to haunt a lot of people, especially and it's definitely affecting their their uh, gaming career, digital career, whatever you want to call it, con- influencer career, all that good stuff, man. So just keep your hands to yourself, man. Um, but yeah, man, we're gonna catch you guys for another issue of No Next Week. Wait, the issue wait, 141. Wait, What's up, Snap? Wait. And um, in a few hours, we got love. Happy Father's Day to every father out there, every yes, yeah. soon-to-be father. And more importantly, um, let's throw this little message out there to the people who always seem to have this for me every time they see me and they know who they are. I am not going to be a father yet. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I felt that. I felt that. Day, I felt that in the famous words like of Morgan Povich, he is not the father. I felt that was going to be his lead in exactly. for, a second, for, for a whole second. I thought we get a baby announcement on Airflow. But anyway. Um, no, yeah, man. man. Y'all can wait three years. <laughs> but no, man. Uh, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, you know, like I said, same things I said, you know, just be be a reasonable human being so um but yeah man we'll catch you guys for issue 141 of nerdflow podcast on next week on springer.com at 10 p.m central as we normally do and this episode does go live on youtube after we're done so see you guys yeah, next week. we try to take from take it from women or, or talk bad about them because i give you none like just go make love to your hand or something <laughs> It's yeah. safe anyway. Porn, we, we out. Pornhub is there for a reason, man. <laughs>